You know, I have been called a misogynist for a long time now, but the truth of the matter is, there was a period of time in my life where that was actually an accurate description of me. And some people might be surprised, uh, other people not so much. So I decided, you know what, I don't really have many other video topics to get onto at the moment, so I don't know, we'll just do this over again. This actually is a story I told way back when on my channel, so this is me retelling the story. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. So this is the story of that one time I became a misogynist. And this happened back when I was uh, in college, it was a couple of years ago. Um, so I'm going to take it from the top and tell you guys the story and kind of like how I was able to uh, get out of this genuine feeling. And by misogynist, I do like really mean that there was a period of my life where like I hated women. I mean like I really fucking hated women. And you'll see why. You will see why. So let me preface this off by saying uh, in the course of my lifetime, I haven't had the best experiences with people of the opposite sex. Now, the, the cool thing about me is I have had some good experiences with women. I, I, not every experience I've had with women has been bad. But the vast majority of the time, yeah, it's it's it has not been, you know, in my favor. I've had I've had like you know female friends and whatnot, but um, like in terms of dating, that they it's always been awful. Um, very so. There's not really one time I could say no. Yeah, there is one time I could say where I tried to date a girl and it was a very positive experience. Vast majority of the time, I most. I can't even say bastard. Like, I only have one time, but I tried to date, like, I don't know. I had a list. The last time I, I checked off my list, it was uh, 39 females. So, like, you know, just prefacing this off, my experiences or my negative experience with women is not really what created the misogyny that I had for, you know, a period of my life. It was actually one event that happened in college, actually. And interestingly enough, it was actually from a girl that I wasn't even trying to date. So you'll see why. So taking it from the top, man. Uh, when I was in college, uh, my fr my my roommate, well, my friend, they're one and the same. I mean, uh, he learned that you could become an RA. And for those of you who don't know, an RA is a residential advisor. It pretty much you're just kind of like you know the big brother of the hall, the dorm that you're in. Just if you don't know what an RA is, and so he was like, yeah, you can go out and be RA. You can put in your application, go out, try to do it. I'm like. Bet. All right, let's do it. Also, you got like, uh, uh, like free. I know it's not free housing, but you got like some of your housing paid. So it was like, shoot, save money and be an RA. Well, nah, that's cool. You know, RAs had a lot of really cool responsibilities. I was interested in. So I applied. They accepted my e initial reply, and then we had to take a leadership development class. And then at the end of that, you were going to have to um, go out and present yourself to a couple of uh the, the overseers i guess you could say uh who overlooked you know ras and whatnot and they get to select them so i was in the leadership development class and in that class the very first day i saw a very beautiful young lady she was very attractive however i knew just from the jump that i, I wasn't even gonna like attempt to date her because this might sound a little bit shallow but she was really skinny and i'm not I'm not really a big fan of like really skinny girls. I mean, it's just it's not my thing. Her face was very beautiful. She's a very attractive girl. She had a very beautiful face. Like I can admit that, but she was just way too skinny for me. I just uh, no no. Um, and this is gonna be important. Like I'm not just saying this because, but like this is important. Like I I didn't really have much of an attraction to her. I just could like I just could pattern recognize that she was attractive, and um. I became friends with her, at least I attempted to become friends with her because in my mind I thought, you know, having uh, an RA friend means that I could like collaborate with her on like other like projects and ideas because like being an RA you could do that, you know, you, you have like events or you could like try to create like events for your dorm hall and whatnot. So I figured like having her as a friend uh, would just be beneficial, you know, uh, what was I wrong? So I became friends with her. And uh, we sat next to each other in class. We hung out a couple of times. I got her phone number, texted her a little bit. I ended up helping her with a psychology paper she was writing. Uh, one time we went to uh, Chick Fil A, and just kind of hung out, and we just had like a nice conversation. It was just, it was just a great fun time. Um, we just, I don't know, we just vibed with each other. There, 
we, I don't know. I just uh, enjoyed my time with her. She was just a good friend of mine in my in my mind. Um, but I remember one day I was hanging out with uh, who was my best friend at the time. But he turned. It was my. This was my first experience meeting a bitch ass nigga. By the way, um, you'll see why. <laughs> I'll get to it. But um, yeah, he he was my 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 closest friend at the time, and I I either spent most of my time with him or with my roommate and my neighbor. Those those three guys were my closest friends there, um, at the time. You know, so um, I was hanging out with him, and he had a friend. I think her name was like Alyssa or some shit. And um, Alyssa was talking about her roommate for some reason, and I don't know how, but I like my intuition. I I felt it in the air. I could sense that her roommate was you know my my new friend. Uh, and I was right, because of course I was right, because my intuition told me, duh. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and they told, and, and so, this is how I learned she had a boyfriend. So, like, I had said that she's very beautiful. I said she's a very attractive person. And Alyssa replies, oh, well, she has a boyfriend. And so I replied, well, I have red shoes, bitch. Like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> and I didn't care. And it's not like, now I, I can realize in hindsight that saying I didn't care that she had a boyfriend, like, meant that maybe I was trying to, like, date her or something. But it really, I just meant that I was just acknowledging that she was attractive. Like, I, I wasn't, like, trying to date or anything like that. That's why I didn't care. It, like, it didn't make a difference to me one way or the other. Um, but I guess I could see, like, if, like, Alyssa had said something to her, then, then she could think that. But I didn't really make any, like, attempt to date her at this point at, at all. I just only kind of tried to talk to her. I remember um, her mother actually died. And she ended up missing school a couple of times. Same missing school, missing classes a couple of times. And I just kind of tried to like help her out there. Um, I tried to talk to her a little bit more and tried to hang out with her a little bit, but like she never really like wanted to hang out. Like I would, I would like say, "Yay, we could like have lunch or dinner or something," and then she just like wouldn't say anything. I'd be like, "Okay." So eventually, I just kind of picked up on she didn't want to, and I was like, "Okay, that's I don't I don't care. You know, it is what it is." I just kind of didn't know if she, like, had a friend group or anything like that. And so I just kind of tried to, like, be there for her. Because, you know, like, her mom died. And I'm like, that's rough. Like, my mom's never died. But if she did, well, I wouldn't want, you know, someone to be there for me, you know. So that's kind of how I took it. But, um, yeah, the, the the interesting thing about hanging out with this girl, though. And, like, I saw her every day in class. And we would, like, walk back to uh, our dorm rooms together after class or leadership development class. And we would just, like, talk to each other when we saw each other, you know. I, I don't know. We were friends. I had a, I don't know why I feel the need to justify that shit, but um, uh, the the interesting thing about like being friends with her was like at no point did she like ever mention she had a boyfriend, which was kind of weird to me, because most of the other girls that I met, this is I'm gonna compare and contrast. And I remember there's another girl I tried to date this girl. This was this was true shit. Like I I tried to hang out with her to get to know her better to date her. Um, we went to where the fuck did we go to? Some kind of cafe. Literally, um, we're hanging out with a couple of other friends. I'm talking to her, and she mentions some guy named James or Jimmy or something. And I'm like, who's that? She's like, oh, my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, okay. Now I know I can end this here and just be friends with her. She's like in my one of my acting classes. Yeah, I remember. Um, the point of like bringing up that tangent was, you know, like she just kind of mentioned her boyfriend. And met, like, most of the girls that I've known that have had boyfriends have like mentioned them. This girl never mentioned this motherfucker before. Like, the, or like if she, if I didn't meet her friend, or like if I wasn't friends with you know the guy, um, I never would have known. Is the is my biggest problem here. I never would know she had a boyfriend. But um, it's just, it just was kind of weird to me that she just never said anything about him the whole time I knew her. Um, but yeah, so pretty much the only thing I could really say, I guess, to end this section of the video off was that we were we were pals. So fast forwarding, I or I had another class. It was like a theater design class, and I needed some some like materials in order to create a presentation. And there's a store called Michaels, and I was like, okay, I just need I need to get the Michaels. And like literally the day before, me and my other friend, the guy who the bitch ass nigga we're gonna talk about in a second, um, he said he needed to get a ride to get a haircut, and the girl had offered to take him to get a haircut. So that's how I knew she had a car. So I'm like, all right bad money like I'll just ask her to take me up there cuz it turns out in order for like our RA project we also needed to like create door tags so I figured that you know two birds one stone we can both go up to Michael's get some supplies and everything will be kosher and there you go um so I asked her I said hey man uh do you think that you could take me up to uh Michael's the other um you know one of these days so I get some materials and she's like um yeah sure like no problem uh do you know where Michael's is? I'm like, no, but I can find one. She's like, all right, yeah, I can take you. I'm like, all right then, all right, I'll bet money. 
All right, so fast forward later to later later at night. I'm just I'm just on the computer. I'm just chilling, and then I get a text message, and uh, the text message says uh, it's from her, and she says I don't sorry I don't think I can't take you to Michael's, and I was like okay well that's a double negative just for some clarification what do you mean there uh, I can I, now obviously I could assume that she meant I I'm sorry I can't take you to Michael's I I, I kind of get that but I just kind of want like a little bit of like clarification just kind of to, to get what she was trying to say fully because again there's a double negative doesn't say anything no reply I'm like yeah okay I guess you can't take me that's fine I'll just I ask someone else and then about an hour later I get a text message from a number I've never seen before and it says uh hey uh, he says my full he said not my full name but he says my first name he's like hey Zarius, like, stop uh, messaging and talking to my girlfriend. She's not interested in you. Or some shit of that variety. Something like that. And I'm like, nigga, who the fuck is your girl? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, nigga, who are you? Look at what the, don't, don't fucking text my phone with this shit. Okay, so uh, I was genuinely confused at first because I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to date anyone. What, what are you talking about? So I asked him, I was like, okay, well, first, well, who's your girlfriend? Let me just first try to figure this out first. He tells me her name, and the, and the name of her of his girlfriend is indeed the person who is supposed to be my friend. Interesting guru. So I'm like, okay, look, listen, man, check this out. Like, I'm not trying to date your girlfriend. I'm, I'm, I am I'm, mean, we're just friends. Like, there's, there's really nothing wrong here. Like, I'm not doing anything. Like, honestly, we're just friends. Um, she never mentioned you, so, I mean, I'm sorry about that. But I mean, like as far as like me trying to date her, like I'm not, I'm not trying to date her or anything like that. And he's like, "Yeah, man, just leave her alone." So I'm like, "Man, maybe I just need to talk to the girl, and maybe we can get this sorted out." In my mind, I gave her the benefit of the doubt. I thought to myself, "You know, maybe I can just talk to her, and we just get this shit, you know, straightened out. She so can just tell him what's good." Now, of course, in hindsight, that seems kind of silly because, like, how could? How could he have even had the idea that I was trying to date her in the first place? Because, fun fact, this guy was out in the Navy. Like, he wasn't at our college. He was off somewhere. I don't know where he was because the girl never told me. I don't... Shit. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, the next day, I tried to I tried to message her. I was like, hey, we need to talk, man. I'm a little confused here. Your boyfriend, you know, messaged me. What's good? And, uh, she eventually ended up texting me back, um, yeah, listen, I don't want to talk to you anymore, leave me alone. I'm like, NANI? <laughs> I was like, what the, okay, uh, that's weird, that's peculiar. So I went to my buddy, uh, Bobby, Bobby was a really cool guy, man, I uh, missed that guy, he's really cool. I told Bobby, and Bobby was like, hey, why don't we, like, get the guy's number, and I can text him, and we can find out more information. I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea, Bobby was like, too late. Already did that shit. <laughs> so it was too late. He already did it. So uh, from what I re remember, basically he said that um, he wanted me to stop stalking his girlfriend. And that somehow he wanted me. He said that Zarius is stalking my girlfriend and three other girls. And I kind of wanted him to stop. Now, this really confused the shit out of me. Because I'm like, three, nigga? Like, what the f First of all, number one, how the fuck could I be stalking the first girl in question when one, I only spend my time with two, well, three people technically, but two of the three people at the same time. So I'm like, I only spend my time with these people all the time. So like, at what point could I like be stalking not one, but three other girls? Like, like what would I be doing? Like, would I be like rotating each day of the week of which I'm stalking? Like, what the hell? So that really confuses you. Even to this to this day, I don't know who these three other girls are. I don't know. That's my dog. If you hear stuff in the background, it's my dog. He's right there, breathing heavily for some odd reason. So um yeah, so I went to my pal. I went to the bitch ass nigga, and you're gonna find out why he's bitch ass nigga right now. And I tried to talk to him about. It. I said, look, man, like this is uh this is some terrifying shit because like. Someone is going around saying, I'm stalking three other girls. I don't know who these girls are. Four. Actually, no, it's four. Uh, I don't know who these girls are. I can't talk to the girl about it because she won't talk to me. I don't know what's going on, bruh. Help me out here. 
Um, and for some reason, like, he just would not help me. He just would not tell me what this girl said. Apparently, for some reason, like, here's the thing that's kind of some, some shit to me. For some reason, the girl went to the guy that's supposed to be my best friend and talked to him about me for some odd reason. This, this was fucking strategy, my friends. This was strategy, my brothers. There's no reason why she would have any, like, why she would talk to him about me stalking her or anything like that. Especially considering the fact that, one, this guy's supposed to be my best friend. I'm spending most of my time with him. Logically, there's no way I could be fucking stalking her because most of my time is spent with him. And him, being my best fucking friend, should have been like, yo, get that shit all the way out my fucking house. There's no way Zarius is stalking you because he's hanging out with me. Logically. But no, he didn't, he didn't do that, apparently, no. Instead, he decided to go the big shit route and go, well, look, listen, what I told her was, yeah, Zarius may have done something, but, like, that wasn't his intent at all. Nigga, get that shit out my fucking house! Not his intent at all. Zarius wasn't trying to date... Why am I talking about myself in the third person? I wasn't trying to date this girl. Is is what he should have said and what he should have known. More to it than just that, because I was trying to date another girl that we both knew and hung out with. So, I mean, like... Again, being my best fucking friend, he should have smacked that shit out of there, but he didn't. Instead, he played around like a pussy, and I didn't like that shit. I didn't appreciate it. We stopped being friends after that, by the way. Um, so this is the first time like I encountered some like whipped white knight bullshit, and it kind of sucked. Because uh, he, was, he was actually, you know what, now that I think about it, it's kind of for the best. So, fast forward a little bit. Uh, we ended up getting called to the dean. I ended up talking to the dean about this, and I ended up having to write a no contact contract with her. And I was like, "That's perfectly fine." The only real problem is that I will never understand why this bitch did this shit to me. Because literally, this is the most ironic thing in the world to me. Literally, every time I've ever like tried to talk to a girl like outside of my class was like to try to date her, and I just ended up becoming like really good friends with her. It's literally everything that happened. But like the one time. A nigga tries to be friends with a girl. And the one time a nigga purposely puts a girl in the friend zone, like, I want to be friends with you so we can help each other out and, like, actually, like, I don't know, be fucking friends, I get some, oh, he's he's trying to stalk me and whatnot. What, was it, what sucked even more was the fact that um, I remember coming back from the summer going into, like, uh, my second year. My friend, my roommate actually became an RA, and he was in an RA meeting, and he said, and one of the girls I used to talk to, I think her name was like Allie or something, mentions me, I think he might have mentioned me, and she goes, oh yeah, well it turns out Zarius was like aggressively stalking, you know, you know, the principal bitch of this video title, like she said her name, but I can't see it, I'm not gonna see it, um, and I was like, damn man, so like, it's not enough that this girl go like, says that I was stalking her. I didn't become an RA, by the way. I think part of it is because... I think part of why I didn't become an RA is because she told someone that was going around stalking her or some shit. But I, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Because um, I would have been a great RA. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, but yeah, so she had gone around telling people that. The, the thing... I've, had, I've even... I actually even heard whispers of shit. Like, it wasn't just that, like, this happened between me and her. But there was even, like, whispers. Like, I would walk past people and, like, people would mention... Like, like, the story of me, like, stalking this girl, so, like, some, like, the problem there. Like, it would, it would be a thing that I've heard multiple times, like, just walking around trying to get from point A to point B. And it was rough, man. And after this girl saying that I was, um, stalking her, I have to report that I became really angry with women fucking in general. Just in general. Yeah, man, I didn't want to have nothing to do with women after that. Like, just, and just, like, of course, like, my mom and my sisters were fine, like, because I love them, they were fine. But, like, every other woman, man, I was angry. I was, like, really upset, just kind of, just, in general, just kind of at the world and just life. It kind of burned me out to a point where, like, literally, like, I couldn't even, like, approach or even, like, talk to, like, women I didn't know. And that was really upset. I remember one time, like, this is how much this shit affected me. This is true shit, man. I remember one time I was coming back from, like, a cross camp. I don't even know why, where I was coming from. <laughs> I was coming back, and, um, like, I heard, like, a little, like, squeaky sound, like, behind me. Like, a little squeaky, like, like you know, like, how, like, the dog chew toys make the little squeak sound? 
And then I heard that behind me, and I turned around, and I was like, oh. And it turned out, it was like a cute girl. It was like this cute, maybe Asian girl, I think she was. I don't know, but she was a cute girl with long black hair. I remember that. And uh, she started talking to me. No, I said, oh, I thought there was a dog over there. And she's like, no, I just sneezed. I'm not a dog. And I was like, no, I meant like, I thought it was like a, like a dog toy, you know? And so then, like, she matches her pace with mine, and like, is like walking next to me for a period of time, and I don't say anything. And I just got like really uncomfortable, and I was like, okay, I'm leaving, bye, see you later. So like I missed some chance to spit some game. I was so angry with women that when one like came and was like, yo, take it. I was like, nah, I, I can't take it. <laughs> That's how angry I was, man. Like I just was just very, un I was scared, and I was very uncomfortable around women. And I was just, I was just mad for a long time, man. Um... What ended up happening though, what ended up helping me a lot, was there's this one girl who I actually needed her help. <laughs> I actually needed her help in my animation class, and she's also in one of my film classes too. And she ended up being like a really cool girl. She ended up like, being a really nice chick. And what was interesting about it was the fact that not only was I able to like talk to her genuinely, like be good friends with her, but she also had a boyfriend too. But like she didn't do the shit that the other girl did. And it, what really kind of helped me was the just a position of like having like two girls in a similar like fashion and a similar position like a classmate of mine um but like seeing one in a very positive way where i was able to like positively have a friendship or at least an acquaintance with her and just be fine and comfortable there and that really helped me kind of pull myself out of this anger that i had for women in general so interestingly enough it took a woman to help defeat the misogyny that was in my heart but yeah man to, to be honest to put it bluntly what that girl did to me when she said that i was stalking her it it just took a really rough toll on me and i think a part of that anger can be seen in some of my older videos i really do think that you could probably see a lot of that um vicious commentary about women and their stupid behaviors came i think partly from just how mad i was there. That being said, don't 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 like dismiss any. I still think what I said was pretty. I, it was pretty reasonable. Well, everything I said is pretty reasonable, but like my delivery of being like really snarky and biting, especially to like a lot of the bedroom feminists, I do think part of that did kind of come from what happened with that one girl. It took me a while to like kind of get out of that anger. So, yeah, man, that's the story of the one time I became a massage. <laughs> that one time I became a misogynist. Some girl lied and said I was stalking her, her boyfriend tried some shit on me, my best friend didn't have my back and he let her talk I guess because she was a pretty girl, rumors spread that I was stalking other girls and it just kind of burned me out from dating in college and so yeah, I hated women for a long time after that. And uh, I got help from another girl who kind of showed me that I was wrong to treat all women the same because of what happened with one. And so that's my story. I don't really know if there's much of a point to it. I think more than to just say that um, when some men become misogynists, when it happens, when you find a true misogynist, I just kind of want people to know and understand that. There's oftentimes a reason for it is how we got there. And like besmirching him from being a misogynist by itself is not really going to help him at all. I really do think that if you meet a misogynist that instead of like biting criticism, maybe you should try to help heal his heart because... Some woman probably did something to him if if he hates all women for it. I'm just saying. So that being said, man, I assume you guys got something out of today's video. And uh, if you did, man, go and click the like button. And shoot, go and click that. Subscribe button. Comment box below. And as always, you guys have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.